box. Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Unicorn won the vote for our next stock box doll, and I'm so excited about that! It's really unbelievable that we've made it this far into the channel's life without making a unicorn doll. Discounting the unicornos, I guess. So because this is the channel's first unicorn, I want to lean into the cliches. I'm thinking white horse, long flowy mane, sparkly accents, and of course rainbows everywhere! Let's get into it! The Stockbox series dolls are pulled right out of the box and thrown onto the work table. It's a creative exercise of sorts to see if we can make a good looking character without planning ahead first. What do you say we use this Monster High Frankie Stein doll? She's one of the cheaper versions with less articulation, unfortunately, but the way I see it, if I don't force myself to use these cheaper dolls now, they'll continue to sit in the box forever. Let's see what we can do about this limb situation. Into the dust box she goes. Yeah, long-time viewers of the channel know where this is going. First I pop off her head by soaking it in hot water. Then it's time for some plastic surgery. The legs are sawed off mid-shin, drilled through the center, and I use the Dremel tool to carve out recesses leading from the holes to the edges. The arms could only rotate up and down before, so let's transform them into more flexible shoulder joints. This is the same method I used with my Sakura doll. Drill a hole front and center. Then create a slit down the inner side of the ball. It should look like this. And I apologize for the poor lighting, it's hard to film things inside a plexiglass box. I cut the arms at the elbow too, making this puzzle-like shape. Round the sharp corners of the square shape so that the elbow can bend. I then prepare six popsicle sticks by drilling holes through the end and sawing them down to size. I drill smaller holes into each one of these pieces too. Okay, those are all the pieces we need. Let's head to the work table because it gets really toasty in that box, believe it or not. If this is your first time watching Delightful, fear not, I promise all this doll body trauma is for a good reason. Let's put her back together. For the best accuracy, use a handheld drill to create a tunnel across the interlocking elbow pieces. Use a drill bit as close to the same size as the wire you intend on using. If you have to choose, make the hole smaller. A tight fit means the arm will hold a pose better. Cut the wire down to size and insert the peg. Ta-da! Doll elbow! Next, make an S-shaped hook out of a sturdy wire. I'm using a paper clip, actually. Slip the S-hook into the shoulder crevice and feed another peg through the hole at the same time. Seal the peg with some glue. Repeat this for the other arm, of course. Taking a small rubber band or hair elastic, catch the hook at the shoulder. You may have to loop the band around twice or even three times to get the right amount of tension inside the body. Make a temporary paperclip tool like this, go through the shoulders, catch the rubber band, and pull it across to the opposite shoulder. Feed the other S-hook through the rubber band, it helps to have a friend for this part, and release. And there you go! We've turned stiff doll arms into multi-articulated ones! Hmm... This is where I stopped on Sakura, but how about we add one more point of articulation? I ended up sawing the upper arm off, drilling and inserting a wire bone. The fit is pretty tight so it stays together, and now the arm is capable of rotating side to side like this. 
For the legs, I'm going to use the wooden tongue depressors to create a hinge joint. So I fit two pieces on the bottom side and one centered piece on the top side. I feed a wire through all of those holes we drilled and mash the wire down into the indentions we carved out. This hides it away nicely and preserves the original leg's silhouette. I do add a little glue for stability, but my motto is the sturdier a structure is without glue, the longer lasting it will be. So use glue as a safety net, not as the main structural component, if you can help it. Screw the legs together at your newly made hinge joint using a bolt and nut. Have the bolt head face the medial side and the nut face the lateral side. Time for sculpting! I'm using a two-part epoxy medium which requires you to mix A and B in equal parts before it starts to cure and harden. If you've never worked with it before, it sort of feels like trying to sculpt with a viscous silly putty. The reason why so many doll artists love it is because it hardens via chemical reaction and is great at sticking to plastic and wood, so you don't have to worry about baking it in an oven like clay. Because, you know, a plastic doll in the oven might not fare so well. After building up her legs and little pointy unicorn hooves, I turned to the body and bulked up the legs and torso. A horse has powerful haunches, right? I think a bigger booty just looks better with the animal legs, I don't know what it is. Looks more balanced, I guess? Alright, with the body mods done, I turned to the head. I already cleaned it up, I hope that's cool. Chop off her ears, she won't be needing those. And I go ahead and drill some holes into the head in preparation for the armature wire, two per ear and one front and center for the unicorn horn, of course. Stick all the wires into the holes and get sculpting. I think your big ol' horsey ears turned out really cute. To smooth the surface, dip a finger in water and run it along the sculpture. I also build up the doll's nose arch. Frankie's got a little button nose, but I thought a horse based character should have a strong and prominent schnoz. A couple hours later, when the epoxy is fully cured, you can sand it down and buff out imperfections. I made sure that unicorn horn is nice and smooth, as well as her hooves. Eventually, I get this. Next, I mark around the exterior of each ear and remove the parts, a smart technique I picked up from Doll Motion. This way, we won't have to work around clunky ears while we reroute, but we know exactly where not to plug the hair. Speaking of which, let's talk hair. Seeing as I've been at this a while and it's my job, I have an embarrassing amount of hair colors to choose from. Just look at all this! Any combination of these nylon fibers would make a perfect rainbow unicorn hairdo. So naturally I chose yarn for this reroute. <laughs> Don't be mad! I thought that somewhat coarse, wavy hair feels more horse-like, and I must admit that I just love long wavy hair. This was the point where I had to commit to a color scheme. I think mostly white with a rainbow streak looks pretty cool. Should we try that? I cut a whole bunch of yarn strips, doubled in length. Then tease and twist the strands apart. This results in a single wavy strand of yarn. With the help of my trusty cat assistants, I prepared a full head's worth of hair. For the reroute itself, I'm using the Doll Planet set of tools and a number one size needle. One at a time, I take a strand, fold it in half, and slip it onto the needle head. Plunge that into the doll and remove the needle. Now do this about a hundred more times. I will point out with a yarn reroute, you do not need to fill every hole. The fiber is much larger and poofier than nylon doll hair, so go every other hole, or even every other three holes. 
Oops, her nose fell off. Uh, we'll reattach that later. With the white hair all in place, let's plug in the rainbow accent along her part. There we go! The hair is poofy enough that it doesn't need glue to stay in place. Pop the nose back on like nothing ever happened. And we're ready for the next step. Is it just me or have the head and body colors drifted apart since I started? They aren't the same mint green anymore. Well, not that it matters, because it's time to coat the body in white gesso. I kept going back and forth on what her skin color should be. Rainbow really works with anything. She could have been pink, purple, blue, but I guess I took the safe option with a pure white. After about four coats of gesso, the base is opaque, and we can start painting on the fun stuff. My favorite pair of shoes are a pair of rainbow platform sneakers, so this inspired me to give her similar rainbow stripe hooves. I extended this design to the inside of her ears, too. And for the horn, how about sparkly gold? Those are looking great! Coat all the limbs and body with a protective layer of varnish. This will keep the paint from chipping off down the line. Once that's dry, I am finally going to put her head back on. You were probably wondering why I hadn't painted it yet. I didn't want to smush and crack the paint when cramming her head back on like this. But now that it's safely reattached, I tie back the hair and gesso the face as well. I was just painting carefully around the hairline, but I probably should have masked it off. That was a bit haphazard on my part. Four coats later, and the face gets the same varnish treatment. She's looking so good! It's always exciting to see the parts come together. Using a scrap piece of vinyl from the recycle bin, I mask off the hair in preparation for sealant. I'll be using Mr. Super Clear UV Flat to coat the body in a matte texture and prepare the face for the face up. I didn't have a plan, but I was sure about one thing going into this ginormous sparkly rainbow eyes. How about we give her a curious and friendly expression? I start off with a light blue pencil, then lay down the first pass layers of rainbow colors in the eyes. The face is taking the pencil remarkably well. Usually you have to be careful drawing on top of painted heads because you don't want to scratch off the paint, of course, but it feels like drawing on paper this time. I guess the sealant really did its job. You never know when Mr. Super Clear is going to behave or not. I tried using sparkly powder on the lips at first, but that looked kind of tacky, so I wiped them clean and just went with pastel instead. I blushed the nose and cheeks with a light pink to bring some life into the face. If you overdo it with the pastel, just take a kneaded eraser and fine-tune the shape. I often do this around the nostrils and to carve out the cupid's bow of the lips. Next up is eyelashes! I really went wild with them this time. Super voluminous and purple. I can never get my lines as fine or fluffy looking as I've seen other artists do, like Jackie O, for example. Talk about beautiful lashes! So, my dolls always look like they've used a cheap mascara that clumps their lashes together or something. After a fresh layer of sealant, I continue to build up color and saturation on all parts of the face. I'm pleased with how clear and vibrant the rainbow eyes look. I'm sure starting on a white base helped the colors show up well. There's a barely visible seam line on her forehead resulting from the epoxy nose job we gave her. So I get out my golden acrylic paints and add a decorative dot to disguise the area. If you fix your mistakes with enough confidence, people will think you did it intentionally. <laughs> 
Come to think of it, didn't I do this exact same thing on Neeks? I've learned nothing! I also dab on cute little dots along the bottom row of eyelashes. Give the face one final layer of protective sealant and we're done! We can unwrap her and reattach the ears and horns now. It's as simple as dabbing on a spot of glue and reinserting the wires into the holes. Oh no, that horn, it's not centered! Oh, how did this happen? Can I nudge it over somehow? Gosh, I don't know guys, I don't want to wreck the face up. I think I'm gonna have to leave it. Hope it doesn't bother you too much. Attach the ears the same way, and now we can work on the hair. There sure is a lot of it! Firstly, the parts around the ears. Letting it fall straight down leaves gaps. What you want to do here is weave the hair. Crisscross the fibers back and forth, working from the base of the ear to the part. That way, it looks much fuller without actually rooting in more hair. As for the hairstyle, well, I think I actually rooted too much hair. It's practically swallowing up her face and ears. Lucky for me, I didn't use glue, so I'm simply going to pluck out strands until I've thinned it out. That looks better, and it's a lot more manageable. Look how much I took out! I really overestimated how much hair I'd need. Back to styling. In an attempt to make her wavy hair look more realistic, I thin out the ends with a razor. This is a tip I picked up from watching Etelin's video. Real hair gets weathered and damaged as it grows out, of course, so the thinning of the ends can make doll hair look more real. Let's try out a cute little braid. Yeah, it diminishes towards the end, that looks pretty cool. The effect works better on straightened yarn hair, I think. Ah oh well, worth a shot. The golden bands keeping her hair in place are nothing more than simple twist ties, but don't they look perfect? I spruce up and add sparkle to the rest of her hair by slipping on golden beads. I'm loving the doll so far, but what on earth is she gonna wear? I can envision this character going in several directions. I think she'd look good in a drapey goddess gown, or maybe a more contemporary look would suit her. I dug out all of my most colorful fabrics and hoped one of them would speak to me. And it did! I just had to do something with that fluffy pink faux fur. Using a cropped and modified version of my hoodie pattern, I cut out the pieces, zipped it together, then flipped it fluffy side out. Oh heck yeah, I would wear that. Thanks to the jacket, the rest of the outfit fell in place pretty easily. Big jackets look great paired with a sassy bustier and high-rise shorts. For the bustier, I sewed two tiny doll-sized bra cups and sewed the bottoms to a length of ribbon. Hand stitched some straps into place, after fitting it on the doll of course, and it's done. Layering is another great way to bring more detail to an outfit, so I think she's going to borrow this transparent number from a rainbow high doll. These shorts would have looked great with her outfit too, they're also from rainbow high, but alas, they aren't the right size. They sure are cute though, aren't they? I was hoping I'd already made some clothes that would finish the look, but meh. She looks good in everything, to be honest. Well, the jeans look a little funny with the horse legs. You know what? I think the shorts are the way to go. Let's sew up a new pair just for her. Because I modified her thighs, none of my patterns fit quite right. That's the downside to dolls with different body proportions, I guess. So I had to modify and create an altered, high-waisted version of my shorts pattern. Basically, I added a waistband and belt loops, and really took my time adding details like the seams and inner pockets. I felt inspired by the quality of those Rainbow High doll shorts to try my best. Well, I have belt loops and no belt, right? I took a strip of white ribbon and painted it rainbow. Well, I would have gone with the whole rainbow, but it's really small, so I settled for three colors. Heat seal the ends. 
and form a teeny little belt loop out of gold wire. Sew the ribbon to the innermost bar and voila, doll belt. It adds a nice splash of color around her waist. There's one more accessory I simply must give her, a hip pair of sunglasses. Using gold wire, I twist and fold it into the shape of the rims, using a cap to help get that perfect hemisphere shape. Dab hot glue on the ends to keep the wires from snagging her hair, and try them on. That looks pretty convincing! You don't even really need a lens, your mind sort of fills that part in, doesn't it? But, these aren't glasses, they're shades. So I went through some packaging and decided this pink vinyl would do the trick. It's not as transparent as I'd like, but it's the best I've got to work with. I cut out two circles and with a delicate application of glue, placed them on the inside of the rims. Oh, they're really charming. Let's see what they look like on the doll. Oh yeah, it really gives her a different vibe. It is a shame they're not more translucent though. Lastly, she needs her ponytail. Using the hair I removed from her head, I tuck it under the metal loop in her lower back and twist tie it together. Our unicorn stock box doll is now finished! Say hello to Guinevere! Special thanks to Cafe Leo for letting me photograph her in their shop. They had the cutest backdrops that were perfect for the dolls. I haven't talked about Rainbow High on the channel before, but I totally love this line of dolls. I've collected four of my favorites already and was surely influenced by them while making this unicorn doll. So my headcanon is that Guinevere attends Rainbow High as a transfer student since she's clearly a Monster High doll. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for another Stockbox episode! It's time to vote on the next project! You too can have your say by voting on which doll you'd like me to transform next. Just click the link in the description box below this video. Yeah, you used to be able to do polls directly on YouTube videos, but it seems they removed that feature, so I'll have to send you elsewhere to vote. Sorry about that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching! I'll see you in the next video! Stay artsy! Annyeong!